Hey, welcome to Oddball History. I'm Lawrence Rosales. I'm Jimmy Nelson. I'm Scott Crisp. We are three comedians, and we're going to be digging into the overlooked, the underreported, and the stranger side of history. Welcome to Oddball History, dipshits. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have a Janelle Monet update. Oh, hell yeah. Ooh. All right, oh, I might quick. know it already. Yeah, let uh, Jimmy do the welcome, thing I welcome, hate welcome first. Welcome, welcome to today's Oddball History. Uh, first, Scott Crisp, comedian Scott Crisp, What's has up? a uh, Janelle Monet update. I don't think I'm telling you guys anything you don't already know here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I it keep was track huge of her news. Yeah, she showed her tits. Oh my god! Ah. You all, know, to, all, to, it, to like a man or the, publicly? No, she was performing. Oh, well, what what is she performing? She, uh, Stand up? <laughs> I think no. It, she's a singer. She was singing, uh, and uh, yeah, it was cool, man. It was a really great uh, update to that story <laughs> that we were, uh, were talking about the other week. I have totally forgotten what we talked about with Janelle Monet. Uh, remember, she had the uh, she she was the uh, there was an article about her in a shimmering black bikini. Ah, okay. Uh, oh, she posted on yeah. Instagram. Nice. And it made, uh, of course, Yahoo News is all over. Oh, of course. The actresses posting things on Instagram. Beat. Which is where we all get our news from, is <laughs> yeah. Yahoo News. That's how tied in we all are to the news and yeah, the latest believe. singers. <laughs> is we went, I forgot, who's Janelle Monet? And it's like, oh, we've talked about her previously. Interesting. I'm That's the one who was married to Tom Brady, right? No, no, it's Giselle oh. Bundichin. Oh, well, I was imagining different breasts in my mind. Okay, yeah, these are different ones. Oh, okay, yeah. look at that. But anyway, check that <laughs> wow, out. Look at that. Now there's four. <laughs> check that out, listener, if you haven't seen it already. It's uh, it's real cool, you know? <laughs> there's some boobs that are nice. Free them, you know, that's what I say. Yeah, free them. Get the nipple out. There we go. And Lawrence, you wanted to run some new bits by us. I, okay, that's such a misnomer. I did not say I he wanted... He said that very specifically. I did not say... I think I have some new bits to run past you guys. No, we, we all agreed that we were changing the format a little bit, and we weren't going to do He our... didn't want him to say, like, I'm going to run bits by... He, he uh, wanted to okay. keep it informal. Keep it, okay, yeah, keep it yeah. casual. So, cut, well, so cut, Lawrence, edit, let's um, uh, naturally have a conversation about okay. a speaking topic. Speaking of the news, speaking of the news... <laughs> 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 so, I, don't, I don't i don't i don't i was talking about this in arkansas right it was like the idea is basically like uh like i don't i don't follow i used to be a very political person it was real annoying uh and i'm not political at all anymore yeah so just the idea very political while simultaneously knowing very little yeah yeah no i vote but i don't read anything <laughs> i can uh but um like I was saying in Arkansas on stage, I kept saying like how I'm not political and how like uh, I, I think it's just a, a sport for rich people now that they've convinced dumb yeah. people to participate in. And I'll get clapped, but it was just like I'm just saying like I I just think if you're too into politics, like I think you just like, no one who is in love is storming the Capitol. It's very what true. I'm trying to say, yeah, it's uh definitely you should treat them like sports teams you root for. Like That's you all it don't is. have if like the Cowboys losing makes you fly off the handle and strike your wife. <laughs> I don't think the Cowboys losing was the problem. But we also don't care about what the Cowboys really do. Like, Ezekiel Ella could slap somebody and we invite are, him on the podcast. Are you just... <laughs> have, you, have no, you have no impact on what they do. Right. They're doing their own thing. They're you're just a thing. bystander in it. Yeah, and you're still wearing the jersey. There we go. Win or lose, you still wear the jersey. You or have you just, to participate just to keep the worst of all things happening constantly. That's been like every election in my life. It's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I hate, uh, yeah. Do you feel like you've prevented I hate some politics. disasters? No. Are you political, no, Scott? No, not really. Uh, no, and I wish I was less political than I am, but uh, it's gotten to a real fucked place. Uh, Boy, I didn't mean to bring everybody down. <laughs> this is this is what my jokes do. Well, there's Ernst. Lawrence's first bit. Hey, He's run right past us, everybody. Oh, We've made Scott look, sad. You know what? <laughs> this is why I get my news from Yahoo, you know? Yeah. Shimmering gotta... dresses don't bring Scott down. <laughs> I... Sheet cake? Everyone loves sheet cake. Elizabeth Whatever Hurley that is. is looking great at 50, you know? <laughs> I don't know if she's 50. But All right, look, well, Lawrence. She does look great. I think that's the point. That is the of point. Lawrence's Last bit. one. And, I, and these none of these are bits. These are just broad ideas I have. <laughs> Scott, yeah, would you like to casually bring up another topic for discussion? Yeah, yeah. I would like to casually. Do you, I, I don't. I think it's. Uh, uh, I, I think it's obviously because I went to jail a lot as a young man. But I don't like when people are super into shows like Locked Up. Uh, why? Because they're like, it's, it's not funny to me. You know, I mean, oh, it's not. But that's not. Like, you could say that for anything. 
you know? What do you mean? Like it just affects you in a way. Some of them are pretty funny. Oh yeah. Really? What about 60 the one? Days in? What, what about the one in So San- that's the show where they like go there and yeah. like they have to sort of, like they, they they have no reason to be in jail. They're just doing it. Yes, they're doing it. That they one's funny cuz everyone's in over their heads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Almost everyone. Some of them are like have either been in jail and they're really good at it or they're like they have, some, that re- the one, they have the, some reason to be really the Hispanic good. guy in 60 Days In that like took over a cell block. And was like, oh, really? <laughs> and he was just like in charge of it. Yeah, some of yeah. them do really well. Uh, but there's an episode of Lock Up where it's in the San Antonio jail at the women's uh, section. And the women there, they separate like the women all coming down from heroin are in one place. And then there's like a little walkway and then there's a, another place where like the murderers are, are specifically like people who harmed their children are kept and they sit there and yell at each other all day. They ah, like heckle each other. The, the coming the, off a of heroin one. The child sh- killers are like, ah, I bet you feel pretty shitty in there, don't you? You <laughs> fucking heroin addict and the heroin addicts are like, you're a monster. You're a fucking monster. And this goes on all day. It's kind of funny they're that like they're like the jail's odd couple yeah. yeah i have a bad joke to make instead of shady acres they call it shaky acres because <laughs> they're because they're shaky because they're, they're coming off of drugs it reminds me of that it's always sunny philadelphia episode where they're like they're going at each other like oh did somebody get addicted to crack <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. they're begging for money yeah, yeah. they're well, wearing tuxedos because they stole all that money <laughs> <from Frank. laughs> like we need to pay our hookers they're like we need crack oh i'm sorry <laughs> somebody get addicted, addicted to crack, to crack. Well, Lawrence, do you have a third topic to casually bring into conversation? No, I'm done. You guys beat it <laughs> well, out of me. You guys no, really beat it out. I think yeah. these have been two really good springboards. Yeah. Jail, uh, you know. Have you guys ever been to jail? No. No. That's part of the reason I think I can enjoy these shows. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I've been so many times. It's just, I mean, the vast majority of it is just dumb people being bored. Oh, yeah, the worst part of jail, I mean, if you're only in there for, like, a month or something, like, the worst part is, like, the intake. Because you just sit in a chair that's not nearly as comfortable as this one. Yeah, for, very comfortable for, chairs. They have 48 hours to process you, and it takes about 47. Yeah. And by the time you get out of that chair, you're so excited to be in jail. Because in jail, you can lay down. <laughs> yeah. You know what it's I mean? It's the best. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I can't wait to be that's on this fucking That's the service bunk bed. they're doing to, for people that doesn't get the credit it deserves. The, one of the Make the was, intake process as terrible as possible so you get in and you're like, finally, a breath of fresh air. <laughs> one time when I was in there for a while, I, uh, I, 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 they put me in a cell. Define a while. Like uh, two weeks. Okay. So they put me in a cell and I had to, they kept rotating out uh, my bunk mate. Because like, since I'm Mexican, they would put other Mexicans in there. But I'm like, you know, I'm a, I'm a here Mexican. Not a over there Mexican, so like okay. they would Racist. take, the, yeah, Racist. well they would deport them. <laughs> they would deport them the next morning. So I have a lot of people get familiar with their their selling, but like I just keep getting different ones. Yeah, and then one morning I come back in, and there's a night I come back in. I've got the top bunk, and there's this uh, very yeah. large, very large, That's good. Yeah, it is good. And there's this very large, about six foot two, uh, uh, African American man, and he is sitting on the bottom bunk, and he just does this for about ten hours. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> And I'm just up there in my bed reading To Kill a Mockingbird, great novel. And um, the next morning I wake up and he's gone. His shit's there. And uh, he doesn't come back like the whole day. And finally I ask a security guard or, or uh, whatever the fuck they're called. You don't mean actual shit. You don't mean he took a shit. No, no, no. You, do, you don't <laughs> shit. I think we should there. clarify that the guy who yeah. was rocking and moaning oh, here we go. for like oh, Allie. Oh. God damn Way to it. ruin the story. Way to Allie. ruin the story. Allie. Oh, Amazon's here. You got to package. We lower those hackles. Amazon packages are an important part of the economy. And that poor uh, lady. Should we got a personal vehicle. Oh, and a personal just vehicle. Just dropping oh, stuff okay. off. All right. Thank it's you a, for your service, it ma'am. It's personal. You know, I'm yeah. in the middle of my jail story. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I, I, asked the secu- the, the, I asked the fucking whatever, the guard. I was like, hey, where did, what happened to my cellmate? And they're like, oh, turns out that dude was insane. He's not coming back. <laughs> And I was like, I was locked up with this dude. Like, he could have, like, this man was bigger. He could have stood up and just decided that he was going to choke Today's to death. Today's the day. Yeah. And there was, I, I only could have hit him with my paperback novel so many times. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a good book. I swear. It's a good book. Just try reading it. Just start it, He's please. like, I just read one word on the cover. Kill. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, jail sucks. Yeah, I believe it. I think I'd be fine in it. Everyone always goes like, man, jail would be the worst thing in the world. And it's like, yeah. 
you're hanging out being bored. Yeah, it's mostly Read a book, bored. do some push-ups. Don't like, you know, you got to fight a guy maybe. My thing is, I just, I just, I'm very good at not talking to people. I would yeah. just not talk. My, my line, my like, my, my opener with people, you know, because we're all kind of, they'd be like, so what'd you do? And I'd be like, I don't really want to talk about it. It's like, oh, you did some bad shit? And I'd go, no, I just don't want to hear what you did. Yeah. And I would just keep it moving. Just keep it moving. Making friends. Yeah, making friends. Because you're yeah. fine. You're like, I'm in here for two weeks. You know, I'm going to yeah. sit on my head. And I, don't then... need to, I don't need to get involved in a gang. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have, I'm going to go to sleep 11 times, and I'm going to go home. Yeah, I'm thinking a lot about Taco Bueno and McDonald's. Yeah. And I know that eventually yeah. I will see that corporate logo again. You know, and I'll know everything's okay. Sometimes I think it'd be nice to go to like a minimum security prison for like six months. You just think as, so? Just as like See, a, this is like locked up. Like, I find this offensive. It's not that easy. And it's oh, not that fun. it would be that easy. You That's what be, they thought in office space, though. Remember? And then they learned that they Federal fuck me in the ass prison? Yeah, I forget. Yeah. I forget yeah. how that went. But I think like, the oh, point, that's a federal crime. <laughs> I think the point was, you know, it's not good. The <laughs> prisons. <laughs> The prison system, not helpful. Have you ever watched Locked Up Abroad? Dude, minimum security, you're playing volleyball, you're reading books, you're doing push-ups. Yeah, I was reading it books would be time. like It'd be like like rehab and a vacation all mixed into one. Learn a trade. That does sound kind of nice. Doesn't that sound kind of nice? Like camp. <laughs> yeah. It is not at all like yeah. camp, you motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. shut up, Lawrence. <laughs> minimum yeah. security, though. Old tough guy Lawrence this is went, where to, they went to camp the wealthy. a few times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> All right, so that brings us perfectly into today's uh, subject is the third modern Olympics of 1904 held in St. Louis, and most importantly, the marathon. The During most, the World's Fair. One of the most traditional events, the marathon of 1904, is the topic of today's podcast. Do you guys watch the Olympics? Are you guys Olympic watchers? Yeah, just because. I'm not particularly into, like, it's just nice. Yeah, you I know? get kind of into it's it background sometimes. TV. Yeah. It's background TV. You like summer or winter? I summer prefer kicks summer. The shit out of winter. Yeah, of but course. Really? But winter's got like snowboarding. Nobody likes winter, but yeah. the Nordic people. Yeah, but we're so good at swimming and track. I'm here for it. Yeah, and basketball. And basketball. Yeah, and boxing. That's our peak time. Plus yeah, the I winter. Guess you guys are right. Yeah, I don't know. Minnesota hasn't been holding it but up like for us. Bobsledding, you know what I mean? Like cool runnings. I mean, these are classics. I mean, the winter's happening during the home stretch of the NBA season. The summer's happening in a dead part of the sports calendar. That is a thing I didn't think of. That's one. See, thing. you guys are so straight. You can't even enjoy figure <laughs> enjoy figure skating. <laughs> I love <laughs> figure skating. Actually, oh, my dad was super... always big on like oh, it's a it's a beautiful art form. And it I was is. like, you don't. That's right. You watch Ice this twice a too. year. I like how you watch this. I like how art. fucking sassy they are. Yeah. I would like, I like, uh, I like to imagine when they skate by the judges, they're like, fucking check out this grace, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look how Just fucking, look yeah. how fucking I glide. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> so the Olympics in 19, I actually appreciated how little they all cared for it in a way where yeah. it was kind of not a silly thing. It was like a between the countries, <laughs> rah, rah, we compete. As you break down the story, like the, 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 these 1904 Olympics, it's like if somebody was doing a sketch comedy show about the, about Olympics, the Olympics, all of these characters would be See, in the that's story. that's kind of the thing I want in the modern Olympics is I think it's not representative of like the nature of what it was started as, which is like friendly competition between like different countries, where now it's we kick ass at everything. Western industrialized countries have time and resources to train people. China spends a lot of effort being good at it. Russia spends a lot of effort being good at it. <laughs> like it's about the country's means to train these people for years to do a thing that nobody cares about. Yeah. And so like, you know, like there's that, like that swimmer that came from, uh, I forgot what wasn't it Syria. The swim, the female swimmer came from Syria <coughs> And she got like she they got water there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought that was a problem. Over there. <laughs> yeah, really. But she uh, was bad. She wasn't a great swimmer, but yeah. she qualified for I the can Olympics. See that <laughs> yeah. I can see that coming. Everyone just kicked her ass. It was like just a regular person showed up to the Olympics and swam. It looked like somebody fell into the pool. And they were just like, "All right, well, it was a cool story, though, you know." Oh, okay, okay. People were cheering for it. People were cheering for it. Okay. Which I always wanted, like, to have the Olympics, but it's like jury duty more than anything. Yeah. 
Like they pick, like you have to have a big enough sample size to give it a shot to someone to be good. But it's just like a thousand people across the country are randomly selected for an event. Now, from that thousand, you whittle it down. Are they, you got to cap it at 50 years old or something. Are they disabled? Do they have some like a heart condition? Which is described as like the Hunger Games. Yes, but cut them out. Yeah. Now, so 700 people are ready to compete. So they have to compete to run like the 100 meter dash. And the best three of those go to the Olympics. So, so it'll be regular ass people. You it'll, want like a baseball farm system. Not even a farm system. I want it randomized. So it's just like. So our, every country has a moderately large high school worth of people to field a team with. Yes. Yeah. And so that then it's just people competing against people instead of like high level athletes with all this training. I like, you know what I like about this idea is how much more it will suck than watching professional <laughs> yeah. athletes. <laughs> this but is I like a funny be, idea. But it would uh, be a more a to more, do as like a sideshow, but then like if you're watching of, on TV, you'd be like, this fucking sucks. What the do you like can, about sports? You like like it's just the a, race they do it's just someone break. hanging, uh, hanging still on the on the bar <laughs> on like the gymnastics <laughs> high bar, like George. Michael from Arrested yeah. Development. Yeah, let's be fair too. In six months, you cannot train to do gymnastics. I don't. Think. Yeah, but that's the thing. It'd be like you know, back handsprings and round offs, and maybe one of the big gymnastics people would make it to one of the gymnastics events, and then it'd be like, holy shit, look at this one go. Yeah, you already have the perfect test of the average amateur non-professional athlete, and that's American Gladiators. <laughs> We got to remember American Gladiator. American Gladiator. I want more American Gladiator in my Olympics. When was I was all a I'm kid, saying. that was like Friday night. It was like American Gladiator. Then there'd be like some monster truck rallies. You know what I mean? And then some people. people there was fun. a there was a Family Matters where Carl uh, <laughs> faced off with Steve Urkel. On oh, American they, they did a crossover. They did. They sure did. Those were always fun back in the day. Yeah. Those oh yeah. Lives. Family Matters was just wild in the later season <laughs> they were just steve would just turn into bruce lee like a really racist caricature of bruce lee do you remember that one i do not remember <laughs> that one we'll see what happened this was. is scott no one remembers this we'll see what happened we will a lot we of people remember this you you guys weren't allowed to watch tv <laughs> by your we love religious that you do this and we support you entirely no listen here's what happened <laughs> okay as we all remember i think i saw this one as, as, we, all, <laughs> as we all remember uh rachel had a restaurant right and one day some no good necks come in oh, by the boy. name of the dragons they're like one of the hardest gangs in chicago how could you not know that with a name like the, the dragons. dragons yeah that's so they the dragons come in and she's like i don't want you trash in my restaurant get the get out of here you know you you scum and they're like you fucking made a big mistake today rachel <laughs> and so of course they come back and trash the place and spray paint their name the dragons, the dragons. all over uh. the restaurant you know and so rachel's devastated steve's like what can i do i'm only a nerd you know but with a machine that can turn me cool maybe if i make a few adjustments to my cool making machine i can turn in to bruce lee uh the the martial arts you it's know worth legend trying. yeah and so yeah he makes a few tweaks and it makes him a very racist bruce lee caricature there's know. gonna be side effects he's yeah. all going oh. yeah. <laughs> like it's I very know the second he walks out into a room they did the he speaks to his credit i think he is trying to do uh bruce lee but even then it's like that's, comes a, tough, that's a tough one as a uh, very uh very racist but See, anyway point is he's bruce lee now yeah it's not the racism that's the point he goes down to rachel's place and kicks the shit out of all the dragons okay uh and i guess they never come back again i think carl arrested <laughs> them too Probably. did you watch this episode scott, 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 scott classic scott. example scott like i, I kind of i kind of took a nap <laughs> yeah <laughs> towards the end no, of scott, you're, you're, spir you're you spiraling the, i told you the entire fucking episode <laughs> yeah. what more do you want from me sure that Can was I miss everything the very the end yeah. 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 sure i did uh, i might have uh, i didn't see the credits roll the but very sure. end was steve being bruce lee and kicking the shit out of all were you expecting a bigger climax you than a, that you have a cool than steve <laughs> urkel laying waste to the entire dragon's roster uh single-handedly with his karate that he just got from uh, a machine that wanna, made him a racist character do you want to know something crazy uh family matters is the show with steve urkel 
No, that was that was Yeah. Is that Family Matters, Steve Urkel? Yes. I I always just thought of it as a show. You've brought up Family Matters four to five times on this podcast. Never have I made the connection that it was the program with Steve Urkel in it. No, either have I. I used to watch the show all the time. Yeah. TGIF. Guys, not- that's because Family Matters was so much more than Steve Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> it I really wasn't. Family Matters was the one with the uh, white family. And it was, uh, God, I don't even remember. That's Full House, I think. You're no. What's yeah. another one? Seventh Heaven. No, like <laughs> earlier. Oh, that was, I remember like seeing that whenever I would get Seventh off from school. Seventh Heaven was wild yeah. as shit. Seventh Heaven, Jessica Biel. Yeah, that's what, okay, yeah, that's they what I remember have, from like, her. Welcome very, to TV, Jessica. <laughs> yeah. They would have very special episodes with the, like the most unbelievable street gangs you've ever <laughs> seen in your life. See, I don't like, like, they were like a, they were supposed to be like a, like a Mexican street gang, but they were all just white kings with their hair slicked back. <laughs> I remember True. so and they wore those belts that said the name of their gang. The nineteen oh four Olympics. So the nineteen oh four second, hold on a second though. Seventh Heaven, Seventh Heaven. I remember watching that show. I don't remember what like you you it the plots. Infuriated me. I don't remember I any of the plots. So I just remember much. it was on when I got First, home from school, which is like at like four forty five in the afternoon. Yeah. Right. And I just remember sitting there eating like some donut sticks in my room, watching T V and thinking Jessica Bill's making me way too horny for it to be like five <laughs> in the afternoon right now. Like, yeah. I gotta wait until the sun goes down. Yeah. That's it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that's Lawrence's third premise of the evening, everybody. We're, we're, all, we're still working on all these, okay? <laughs> But so the night. This has been a very <laughs> fucking horny episode so far. By the way, can I just point that out? I started out and I meant that to be like lighthearted. I think I should have said it later in the episode, but I think it just came off as maybe like, yeah. Did you see the Janelle movie? Video? <laughs> yeah, you did yeah. start this. You did start this. <laughs> Waiting to tell you all week. There's a titty on the internet. I need to tell I you guys. Saw, <laughs> I saw. I saw. Both of them. I saw a real oh, life Lord. titty on the internet. Oh Lord, they were glorious. <laughs> That's how I started the podcast today. Really, you know, something to think about <laughs> for future <laughs> episodes. <laughs> so if I want to build up to day. the horniness, you know? <laughs> yeah. And you then, can't start and then with Lawrence horniness. swings in with, I was beaten off in the afternoon. No, I said I Beale. didn't. I said I didn't, but it was hard yeah, not to. Yeah, we read between the lines. <laughs> we read between the lines, Lawrence. <laughs> oh, thank okay. You. Thank you. So the 1904 Olympics <laughs> were held in St. Louis, and it was during the uh, World's Fair. Yeah. I liked that uh, St. Louis was like a city on the grow. They were like, yeah. we're not sure about this city yet. Everyone wants to come check it out, see what St. Louis is all about. Have you seen it recently? They did not have Nelly to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> it was, was pretty Nelly. We all had Nelly to tell us and all And the rest about. of the St. Lunatics. Why did he it's have that Midwest bandaid under his thing. eye? I believe it was in protest for the war in Syria. <laughs> It was he was trying to promote the girl that fell in the pool. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so what were anyways? <laughs> and I mean, St. Louis, real shithole. But so they actually talked kidding. about in that Olympics, St. Louis was so hard to get to at the time. Where and it was 1904, and this wasn't like a money making endeavor. The Olympics yet. I lost a tooth in St. Louis. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry. Is that that's what, that's why Lawrence sits on that side because he's so conscious <laughs> about sitting on this side. I lost a goddamn because he just looks like a St. Fucking, Louis. Yeah, it looks like a homeless guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is good side. Yeah. So just think about the other side. No, oh, the arches, how they remind me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was so hard. You had to take like thousands of miles by ship, and then you had to get on a train for like a week. And it was just the middle of nowhere at the time with little infrastructure. So only 630 uh, participants came to that Olympics, and 523 of them were Americans. Because nice. they could get there easier. I like those odds. <laughs> <laughs> so, I do like those odds. So yeah, we really, we really dominated in the medal count, but also because we were ninety percent of the participants. Yeah. And how many of the participants had never participated in the event that they were participating? You in could as just well? go. It was like field day. It's it was like fi- field day. It school, was America's yeah. field day, with the world could come. But uh, but so, most of them were like, we're good. And we're yeah. like, cool, we're gonna win. But so we, it was mostly us. And then the uh, the marathon of that event was kind of famously just everything went wrong. It was the goddamn. Have you ever seen the movie? It's a mad, 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 mad world. Yeah, that's just a wacky race the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Like, like the a, movie like a Crook race. dies at the beginning, and he's like, I I hid my treasure, and he like describes it. And the whole rest of the movie is all these different groups of people. You know, and it's like nothing but comedy legends. It's an incredible movie. Yeah, this is that, but a rate like they're all like uh, wacky characters. Just a 
just a carnival of rascals. Oh yeah. This race. But that, so kind of one of the main problems is nowadays with like science and stuff, they don't run marathons unless it's between like 40 and 60 degrees outside and they start early in the morning. This, they started mid afternoon, like three o'clock in the afternoon (laughs) on a day that was like 90 degrees in the shade. They say, yeah, well you, by everything that happens in the race, there is no, like the science behind health and fitness yeah, it's, was and the main guy running they, it was actually doing a study that he didn't tell anyone about about what was it called forced dehydration yeah or intentional oh, yeah. dehydration They're begging for water he's like Mm-mm. yeah <laughs> no, it, it was no. like a 24 it wasn't a they standardized they believed at the time that water a lot of people most people i would say believed that uh <laughs> that drinking water, eating food during any kind of athletic competition would only upset the stomach. Yeah. That's why Joe DiMaggio famously only drank coffee and smoked cigarettes during games. No water. Like an athlete. He would be in the fucking hot sun in the middle of the day in Yankee Stadium pounding. He would have a cup of coffee and a cigarette every half inning. So that's nine coffees and cigarettes. God dang, on a night game. That's, day. And yeah. then he'd go home where he'd relax with a smoke. <laughs> and a, and a but, coffee. But so there was an, it wasn't a standardized distance at the time. So it was like 24 and a half miles or something and uh, they only had one water station which was a dirty well 12 miles into the race (laughs) and then it also wasn't like a track set aside they did the first five laps were around the stadium and then they hit the town and like didn't tell the town that the Olympic marathon was running through town. Yeah. Like there's just so they're a dodging. Town. Yeah. They're, they're dodging, dodging cars, uh, people walking dogs, yeah. uh, carriages. One of the, one of the racers got, got chased, chased by a wild dog. Mi- what was it like? It, it was a mile. It was a mile outside yeah. of the track by wild dogs. Which we'll circle back to that racer. Cause he's a character. You can't himself. run around wild dogs. You just can't you do can't. it. You can't. Like everybody knows if you grew up around wild dogs in a neighborhood, you can't just take off running. Yeah. Or going Slowly. to come after you. Yeah, you, you can't do a slow jog away from a wild dog. And I gotta say, I, I think they should have been inspired by this and started a wild dog race <laughs> yeah. in the Olympics. It's like bobsledding I would the watch. opposite. You know what I mean? Like it's, serping it's chased like, by the dogs. Instead it's of- like the regular races, but with consequences. <laughs> <laughs> but so uh, I think they had 41 people sign up for the Olympics this year. Nine of them no-showed. So 32 people raced, and of the 32 people that raced, only 14 finished. That is a great canceled plan to wake up in the morning and be like, man, I was going to run a 21-mile marathon with I dirty know, water. I was going to stay I home. signed up for the Olympics tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. But let's go out on the town a little <laughs> yeah. bit. You, you just know? hit the snooze alarm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's in the afternoon. I can sleep in. Like, oh, shit, it's four. But so uh, I, I think saw, I saw a Comedy Central sketch one time when I was a young boy. Like, did you guys ever watch those Comedy Central half hours? Oh yeah, I watched sure. all of them. I have a lot of those jokes in my head, but I don't remember who sold or who told them. But there was one where he goes, uh, "What do you think the laziest, like the the laziest person to ever hit a snooze alarm was?" And he goes, "I just keep imagining a woman waking up and being like, fuck it, I'll just have the kid." It worked better in the room <laughs> when the other man did Come it. Come on, that's a good <laughs> joke. That's a good joke. All right, that actually wasn't from a 30-minute presents. That's uh, Lawrence's fourth topic he uh, wished to bring up today. All right, well, <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't miss if you don't swing. <laughs> you know, you but so I think we should go through some of the... And at least it wasn't wildly horny like the rest <laughs> of this podcast has been. And look, I'm speaking mostly to myself there, but Jimmy, you've had your... Pro- no, <laughs> this is blame you. Uh, so they had some, uh, I think, like... For one... Well, uh, there was... As crazy as this part of the Olympics was, there was one really uh, cool part of this Olympics, and that was that a fella named George Iser won six gold medals in uh, in gymnastics on a wooden leg. Oh wow! He was participating in the Olympics to fund a whaling voyage. He was yeah. going to go kill a whale that was <laughs> his whale enemy. His leg. I'm just kidding. That was, a, that, was, that was some wooden leg humor. But uh, no. As a <laughs> wooden leg, humor. just some wooden but leg humor say, you for know, all the kids out there. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta say, I appre- what I really appreciate about this George Eisner fella, he's a real hero, you know. And as uh, like uh, uh, unlike some inspiring athletes who use prosthetics, prosthetics to achieve rare greatness, he didn't shoot and kill his wife. 
That was a shot oh, at Oscar, Oscar Pistorius. Pistorius. Yeah. Some more yeah, that would be humor. a real dated you... joke, but here's the thing. Oscar Pistorius is up for, uh, uh, what's it called? They're going to let him parole? go to jail. <laughs> up for parole or whatever. Parole, that's the word I was Does thinking. he get to have his so fake it's legs in there? again. In camp? At camp? Does he get to keep his legs? Not as... I'm sure. He doesn't get the cool ones, I They're bet. They're called blades, though. The you blade know, runners, that they call them. Yeah. I'm sure he just gets regular prosthetics. Wood pegs i always thought i always thought it'd be you cool to have legs you're in prison god damn it that guy really made you think it'd be cool to have those things but i i picked up a dude with fake legs i, on Uber ride. I, was, I don't think yeah i, don't, I thought i, I was, was never like, like i wish i would lose my legs so i could have cool but do you do you get as tired whenever you're running if you've got fake legs Fuck i'm sure yeah, I yeah. Bet. i would bet they look so bouncy <laughs> <laughs> Like this guy don't even get tired. It's just about, <laughs> like, yeah, it's just about look, how fast can he go? They look so fancy. <laughs> they look so fancy. Also, ice baths. They do real. look. Remember moon shoes? They look like yeah, yeah. They look like you could do flips with them. Yeah, like yeah. you know, I can't do a backflip, but I thought, man, if I had those legs, I bet I could totally do a backflip. Maybe flip. if Oscar Pistorius had just spent more time doing entertaining himself with backflips, <laughs> yeah, a young lady would and still have her life. Last time shooting a gun into a closed bathroom door, <laughs> yeah. maybe we would. But I mean, what's going on in there you know he didn't know he didn't know so the 1904 <laughs> Olympics. so I, we'll go the through some of the uh some of the contestants that didn't place or finish is so wacky just, bunch there was 10 greek men that weren't runners that just on a whim were like oh we're, we're fucking here like let's run the marathon in the olympics yeah and they kind of walked and didn't say that that's serious and they didn't we? they didn't finish and yeah but there's 10 dudes uh, you could just sign up for the olympics and be like yeah i'll run fuck it yeah which is nice it's nice yeah that's cool and then the world's fair was in town and so there were two the first actually like african men that competed in the marathon which now like kenyan runners are famous for being great at it and these guys were the participated they were south african south african they were in the boer war which had just come to an end and they were actually it the they weren't supposed to be at the olympics they were at the world's fair where they brought 600 african men from the boer war and had them do a reenactment at the world's fair and the reenactment was supposedly the shit <laughs> yeah. it was like a, the wikipedia page is like it was so good you don't even have any idea <laughs> Fucking, you've seen war recreations before. You haven't seen shit yeah. compared to this Boer War And they just recreation. finished it a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> They're all, They're all real fresh. fresh. It's real fresh in fresh. their mind. Yeah, yeah. But so these two dudes were dispatch runners. And so they ran the race barefoot. And uh, one of these men was the one. He finished ninth. But they said he would have finished way sooner if he wasn't chased off course by a wild dog for a mile. Yeah, we've all heard that excuse. We've all, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, we've all heard that excuse. But, oh, man, they talked about how, like, dusty everything was with all the vehicles because it was a dirt yeah, road. Yeah, they couldn't have done much of a better job if they were trying to kill these people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They had, so, okay. It was in, kind of a in addition, kind of vibe. Yeah. So, yeah, in yeah. addition to it being hot as shit, there was a car, ironically, full of, like, physicians and people uh, it's called an ambulance. Out in front <laughs> study of the effects of dehydration out, on these men. Out in front of the field of runners, who none of their all the places they're running, there's no paving. You know, yeah. they're just kicking up dust the entire time. Did uh, almost kill a fella. He was yeah. he just passed out in a ditch, and he had so much like he'd inhaled so much dust and dirt that it like damaged his lungs. And they just a bystander happened upon him. Yeah. Like he wasn't discovered by the race, other racers. There was just like a dead he guy was, in a ditch. He was dying on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. And they choking went, up blood. Who's this guy? Full of dust. Full he, of dust. He's just trying to say, I'm I'm running in the Olympic marathon. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah get a job, yeah, nerd. I've never heard of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh what was it? Uh, no, so there's the two African guys, there's the guy that almost died. There's a the guy that showed up wearing uh slacks. So we will get into the story oh, okay. of right. the greatest <laughs> Felix Caraval uh -huh. was a fucking alley cat. Yeah. And boy, yeah, did he, he alley cat his way across this Olympics. He's my favorite he, character from the I whole knew thing. a guy named Felix in high school. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, big weed dealer. Was it a cartoon cat? No, it was a big weed dealer. He always drove a Jeep shirt off in the middle of the winter. And when we well, were, you don't gotta tell Felix when we his were, business. When we were <laughs> seniors, yeah. when we were seniors in high school, he'd he'd accumulated so much money from selling drugs, he was renting a two story home that he just used as a grow house. Good for nice. him. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know where he is now. The last time I heard I he went to jail you. in Austin and <laughs> yeah. used a fake name and he got out. Um, but I don't know where he is now, but I bet he's doing great. 
I bet he's doing great. This is where we disagree this, this, on this, this man was running guns in 12th grade, like, yeah. at, at a high level. Like, I have a weird feeling he's not doing great. <laughs> I bet he is. He was I very he's, studious. He was very I'm sure smart. he's in an institution right now. No, no. I think he's probably doing great. I okay. bet you can't find him on the internet. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bet you can't verify any of this. So anyways, the 1904 Olympics. <laughs> yeah. Well, so uh, Felix Carvajal. Is that what it is? Carvajal. It's like Carvajal. Carvajal. There's a silent J in there. Carvajal. I'm sure. <laughs> no, uh, he, was a, he was a mailman he, in Cuba. Yeah, and he had done a bunch of running demonstration exhibitions in Cuba to raise money to get to the Olympics in 1904, went to New Orleans and promptly gambled it all away. He lost it on a dice game. Oops. Had to and hitchhike. Then hitchhike to the Olympics. Oh, this is the slacks guy, right? This is the slacks okay. guy. Yeah, yeah. Showed up in slacks and like a heavy coat, I think, and yeah. like a hat. Like, I don't know if he had also gambled away his yeah. running gear or if they didn't have running gear or if he assumed that the running gear would be provided. <laughs> <laughs> but he showed up <laughs> like, dressed. The thing we're providing is bad shit. You know what showed I mean? up dressed for like a long ship oh, voyage and they talked and about like, yeah. took like do you pity. guys have any running shoes They're like we got wild dogs yeah. someone, someone took pity on him and <laughs> cut off his slacks at the knees there was an american discus thrower cut his pants into little jorts for the race and then the american weightlifting team gave him room, room and board while he was there because he literally <laughs> raised this money blew it hitchhiked he was catting around the whole time and he was very like he was very gregarious he would just stop and talk to people along the route and then uh, at one point he went over to some people and asked them uh, they were eating peaches and he yeah. asked them for some peaches and they said no and so he stole a few of their peaches and ran off with them <laughs> what a rascal and I then, love this guy so yeah. much it's he's great like, to have motivation I was like I gotta keep running because I'm the cop and he's Victor Lustig. That's how much I love this guy. <laughs> but so it kind of was fun. And then it's so described as the worst marathon ever. People are dying. Well, wait, Carvajal. Did you read how he finished? In defense he of the, the a rotten, died. He ate a rotten apple. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And his stomach started hurting, and he had to go lie down. He took a nap in an apple orchard. <laughs> took a nap in an Which apple orchard. Which is what I was saying. Is everyone else's story with this marathon is of <laughs> woe and failure and horror and death. It's a death race. And pain. It's a, it's a death, death race. race. Yeah. And then Felix <laughs> comes strutting in like an alley cat yeah. and just has a ball. Like he's cruising around, chatting up chicks in cars, stealing peaches. He eats Living an apple. The dream. Like they say you got to dance in the rain. You know what I mean? Has he's an upset just... tummy, takes a little nap at an <laughs> orchard. There's a breeze going. He's in shade. And then he finishes the Nothing race. Nothing gets this guy down. You and know? Yeah. everyone was upset because everyone's finishing this thing like a death race. And uh, Felix came, like, finished in like good spirits and like that at a good pace. And he finished in fourth place. Shout out, Felix. He did good in the race. Yeah. Napping and talking to people. Which goes to show the tortoise and the hare is really... Well, yeah. he also and showed up very tail. cocky. He showed up like, I don't even, what do you guys, we, we're, we're, this is business to me. This is, yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing slacks. But so Felix like, was the best. And then, he, uh, yeah, then there was the guy was who the cheated, the cheater. He originally, yeah, I forgot his name, Law or something, where he was running the race, and he'd won the Boston Marathon the year before. Frederick Lors. Frederick Lors. A so he was a bricklayer by trade. Well, put an asterisk next to his name. A bricklayer by trade, so he trained at night. Which, what a fucking early 20th century thing. Like, yeah. being a professional athlete and be like, I got to train at night because I'm fucking laying brick. Yep. All day. But so he was actually a very accomplished runner. And then, but he, you know, conditions are terrible. It's 95 degrees, dust in his mouth. He gets like nine miles in and says, Cramping. fuck it. Cramps, collapses. Says, and then, fuck all this noise. So a car picks him up and they're just going to go back and be like, well, I lost the race. And then that car ends up breaking down on the way back to the stadium. And so by this time, he's gotten a break. He feels better. And he's not going to sit there and wait for six hours. There's no AAA in 1904 St. Louis. Yeah, like, this guy, right. Felix is asleep in an apple orchard, <laughs> yeah. and I can't take a little car ride. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and so he just doesn't tell anybody, and he just kind of 11 just, miles. He just keeps running. He drove for 11 miles of the race. And then runs like I don't know how it was a, like a ha a couple miles to the stadium to where yeah. the finish line was and broke the tape. Uh, well, he ca he said originally was, he said he didn't mean to, but well, he he said he turned into the stadium and everyone like fucking it's the first guy in the stadium it's like three hours in and everyone just goes nuts and he's just like. 
yeah, always a showman. He's yeah. like, I gotta run through the ticker tape, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then not and say he, anything. Uh, he <laughs> the he finishes the, the race. His daughter goes to put a wreath. Teddy over Roosevelt's him. daughter is about to crown him. Yeah, with a with a laurel on his head. Which who doesn't want that? I mean, Teddy Roosevelt's Ooh, yeah. daughter. Yeah. yeah. Who, probably a real boxy lady which was like the, <laughs> the best thing <laughs> a lady could be at the time back yeah. then it was a brought, sturdy a sturdy a sturdy rubenesque lady. box uh yeah. of a la- yes sign uh, me up and then so this boxy roosevelt over here <laughs> is putting a laurel on your head and you're thinking my god this is am i dreaming this is the best life can ever get and then bam some asshole comes behind and they're like hey that guy was in a car for 11 miles and uh and the dream ends right there <laughs> and he goes uh, I was joking. Yeah, his, I was joking. His defense was, was just getting. Now nah, I was just joshing. Guys. Just joshing Come on, guys. Yeah, which yeah. is you know fucking hilarious. But then in, and they did not accept that as an excuse. Believe it or not, they banned him for life for one year. Well, so they, they ban <laughs> they banned him for life, and from all amateur races. And then he apologized, and they went. You're, and they you're reinstated him on, yeah. in yeah. time to like run. Uh, I think the Boston Marathon. I think he yeah, won, he won in 1905. The yeah. And then he was. Uh, and then he was banned again for running an uh, unsanctioned race. He was. He was street marathoning. <laughs> which I, what I was really an unsanctioned race? Yeah, I don't and then know. He was like. And then after that, he was reinstated again. He ran races in uh, 1908 and 1909. Uh, and then in 1914, uh, he was finally permanently banned from running by a fatal case of pneumonia. <laughs> he, he died. <laughs> <laughs> Dying is typically the end of your race career. You know what I mean? After that. that. Why, yeah. <laughs> we like to think he's, he's trotting along up there in the sky yeah. right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he, he died. <laughs> He was uh, he was banned by the uh, Amateur Athletic Association in the sky, you know. <laughs> yeah. So but wait, the, no, is that what it was funny? Is like a, if he re- he runs past the ticker tape into heaven, and God's like, you know, just kidding, yeah. just kidding. Do y'all remember <laughs> the Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Oh, Switching God. it up a little on yeah, you. Yeah, okay. 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 from Family Matters to Fresh Prince, of course. Uh, do y'all remember that Jeffrey, their butler, had done the same thing as Frederick Lors? He was there was like a documentary made about him by the English press, and it was called Jeffrey Butler: Shame of a Nation, <laughs> and it was about him cheating in a in a he was like some Olympic runner, and he yeah. cheated in a race the exact same way. He took a car. And there was like this hilarious video of him. I think he was like eating a hot dog when he got out. Like, <laughs> well, they so like, my Barry point Switzer is behind a bleacher. <laughs> My point is exactly uh, like the 1904 Olympics. <laughs> but so now we get to the guy that won, which was a uh, Thomas Hicks. And so you got to think Hicksy, of, a clown. He was, he was not a an clown. An honest to God clown. <laughs> I read an article in Runner's World. Why would they lie? That said he was a professional clown. Records are spotty at the time. But this guy was a clown. He was a running <laughs> yeah. clown. Records I'm are not spotty. just saying that because, uh, you know, he participated in a very clownish race. Yeah. He like a was a legitimate clown, a clown. clown. And like, I like uh, the article I read was like, he was a clown, which is weird because like everyone would always comment on how serious and sad he looked. And I was like, no, that sounds like a clown. Sounds, yeah, what are you clowny. talking about? Yeah. Sounds like you guys don't know anything about that. clowns. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's never seen any episodes of Baskets. <laughs> well, so his race, yes, he won it. It was very hard on him. But it, it was a big – it goes to show you what you were allowed to do in sports. And they, like, didn't – or there wasn't rules. You Clearly just kinda, not. There's wild dogs. There's dust storms. But then, and then the, guy, it, the guy, it went too far when he rode a car for 11 of the miles. There's like, peach thievery. That's, that's too, yeah. There's uh, there's people riding in vehicles. You know what? That's what those people get for not sharing their peaches, though. I'm with, running, with running the out hero the front of this story. Is the top gun the clown? <laughs> but so this guy was running his race, and at the time, strychnine, which is rat poison. Strychnine. I strychnine. Think. Lo siento. Where, uh, it's rat poison now. But at the time, it was thought to have a uh, like a performance enhancing effect yeah, in small low doses, doses. It where could, it gave you like muscle spasms and like a little shot of energy, little five hour energy. But but if you took a little too much, you'd die. You. I, and so I, I, I like drugs. I've walked the line throughout the race. <laughs> so they're the feeding race, him the strychnine and egg whites. The trainers would instead of, they refused to give him water. But what they do is they take a sponge with distilled water and wash out the inside of his mouth. And then dump water on his head, 
yeah. which sounds like his training staff was the Three Stooges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they just slap him around a little bit and tell him to keep going instead of giving Big him water. Big believers in the, in Look the like you're dehydration low on thing. poison here. You but, know? And then they were giving him the strychnine, uh, strychnine, strychnine, strychnine. Strychnine. And they gave him multiple doses throughout the race. And then towards the end of it, it, like, upset his stomach, all the egg whites and poison he was eating. <laughs> <laughs> Which is wild. That's hard to believe. It's funny know? to say. <laughs> yeah. That they gave like, him, started giving him brandy to settle his stomach. <laughs> yes, brandy. And they. Uh, <laughs> Didn't he start hallucinating? I don't remember that. He but. could barely walk. And they, like, basically had to walk him, like, the last little bit. Which was of one the thing race. they tried to DQ him for first was that he was carried across the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> his trainers are. His trainers are his trainers are like you can't blame him for that. We have pumped him full of strychnine. We have poisoned the fuck out of this man. Certainly, you can't take away from his accomplishment just because we carried him. A little. We have poisoned this clown. We've got him drunk. We can't carry him. We, <laughs> we got the clown drunk. You wouldn't be stuff saying full shit. Poison. <laughs> yeah, we got to drag him in. Come on, man. This clown can only take so much. But he uh, he finished with a time of three twenty eight, three twenty eight, yeah. which is crazy to me too. Because like I'm yeah, running, I mean the being, course was crazy, but it's twenty miles. Like I'm not saying twenty miles is easy. Twenty four point five. Don't shortchange me. Twenty four. Yeah. Oh, sorry. But it seems like they did everything to kill him in the process. <laughs> yes. They yeah. To kill him. Yeah. Uh, truly, that it's <laughs> again. They couldn't have done a better job of like almost trying killing. to be like, evil to this man. Yeah, horrible. I'm really glad that when I played sports in the age of like Gatorade, you know, <laughs> yeah. like when we got thirsty and feeling low, they were like, "You need some electrolytes, not I like remember. you need strychnine and egg whites." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad was old and enough for like in like the seventies, late sixties, when they did like salt pills and shit during football practice. Oh, yeah. We were just like that is the opposite of what anyone needs. I remember yeah. being playing football when I was a kid, and like if we like if somebody ran out onto like the track with like their earrings in or something, you know, coach would get pissed, and he like make us run laps, and like the punishment was no water. No one's getting any water. <laughs> yeah. for the next that'll, hour. Show the yeah. Yeah, that'll show the children. That'll show the children. That'll build the children's character. Yeah. And so, finally, you're allowed to run up to like one of those like uh, you know those fucking doll not not a dolly but like one of those little things and you have a water hose where they just punched a bunch of holes in it and we're yeah. all just slopping at it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So do y'all have any fun facts or anything else about the race, Scott? Not the race itself, I don't think. But uh, a lot of stuff happened at this fair. Notable <laughs> stuff yeah. that I noticed. <laughs> Helen Keller, for one, she gave a lecture. How cool is that? You know? I thought that was a thing she couldn't do. She gave a lecture titled Run Tell Dat. <laughs> God damn it. You know, like, I don't think that's what her lecture was called, but she did give a lecture. She did give a lecture. Also, uh, you ever heard that phrase, an apple a day keeps the doctor away? That shit was debuted at the 1904 World's yeah. Fair by a Mr. J.T. Stinson. <laughs> I looked at his Wikipedia page. It was like, this was definitely the height of his career. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the there's a man day. dying in an orchard <laughs> over here yeah. trying to run a marathon. You know, that's not help. those apples weren't helping him at all. It is true. Yeah, Carvajal might have a thing or two to say to old J.T. Stinson. The Sundance kid the famous cowboy he was there uh butch cassidy uh no i think just the sundance kid made it oh it was butch cassidy and the sundance was, kid was geronimo at this one I uh geronimo was, was the there kid. geronimo was there geronimo was there Dude, he this was is... uh talk about one of those sentences in history that just makes you go uh it was like uh he was on display like they put him on exhibition yes. like in a teepee we so he was like behind a rope like uh yeah just uh, sitting there with his dick in his hand, just like smoking no, a pipe. We talked about this on the yeah, road, I think. <laughs> we were doing a road gig together, and I told you in college, I, I read the biography of Geronimo, and it ends with him at the World Fair. And the, like they're just putting him on like a uh, Ferris wheel, watching him just freak the fuck out. It's, oh, it's yeah. dude, it is, yeah. uh, it's a hard, it's a hard read. It's a yeah. real hard <laughs> yeah. read. Yeah. This man was like a, a glorious battle soldier, but the end of the world, but like what they did to him, it was That's it was why terrible. I want a Wikipedia of all the glorious battle soldiers so, throughout history. Definitely. Yeah, that'd be a good <laughs> the, one. So in addition. <laughs> fuck you. You know what? <laughs> I, I, I struggled with my wording there. It's Geronimo. I don't have to say more. I mean. In addition to Geronimo, you know, who was there was the world's largest cedar bucket. <laughs> 
the world's largest cedar bucket, not only warranted mention in the 1904 World's Fair Wikipedia page, but it has its own Wikipedia page. <laughs> uh, arsonists burned it oh, in 2005. No. I know in 2005. what you're thinking. Good God, what kind of world? What is this coming to? Ain't nothing sacred no more if we can't have a world's largest cedar bucket. You know what I mean? And I know you're thinking, how big is this bucket? And I'll tell you, Jim, six feet tall. <laughs> How about that? Not for the largest cedar <laughs> bucket. Yeah. And then at six feet and uh, I think in circumference at the base and nine up ah. top, it is a very big cedar bucket, but not as big now since arsonists <laughs> yeah. burned it in 2005. Uh, also, Oni the dog made an appearance posthumously. They had a dead oh. dog at this fair. Get this shit. Okay. Shout out that dog. Oni Shout the out dog. Chewy.com. Oni the dog, another tragic figure brought to you by Chewy.com. <laughs> <laughs> Oni, <laughs> Oni was the dog of like a postmaster and he I think he was in uh, Rochester, <laughs> New York and the, the dog loved sleeping on mailbags so when the guy retired he just left Oni to live at the mail center so he could sleep on mailbags and he would sleep on the mailbags and go on long trips uh, around the world you know one of his trips was literally around the world and he became world famous for it even though it said on the wikipedia page he didn't break any speed records it was like why are you expecting it wasn't he was just going with the mail like yeah. why are you shitting on his so accomplishment if he, he loved sleeping Poor on mail bags that means he most likely died doing what he loved the most well no i'll tell you it's way worse than oh, that God damn it. <laughs> i just want i want to i want to get that dog happy ending remember yeah. the recurring theme on this podcast. Yeah. yeah no but so he is living it up you know he's going with the mail all over he's getting everywhere with pin uh little pins to him to the point that they weighed him down and they had to take some of the pins off his vest because he was like he could barely walk <laughs> from all this decoration that he yeah. got from going around the world you know so oni uh uh, you know, he goes around the world. He's mega famous. And then one day, uh, you know, he retires. They're mm -hmm. like, he's not, you know, he's not a young dog anymore. He shouldn't be taking these long trips with the mail, you know. And so uh, he goes into the care of like one postmaster, I think. And then uh, uh, shortly after that, he bit, I think, attacked a, uh, a, post, uh, a postal clerk and a U.S. marshal both uh and then a, it's a quick way for a dog to go and then a <laughs> he went postal the first no and first. they didn't kill him at the time a postmaster ordered uh his execution so that's how oni oh. went he is a <laughs> beloved hero uh the the executed male, by the, the postmaster <laughs> executed by the postmaster even darker than that uh they think that he was Good. uh being kept tied in like a room like in a place that he wasn't normally in and that might have partially explained his, why he was upset his uh yeah his being upset and then it's like in any case uh oni was put down on, <laughs> like, says it on the day and it's like oh thank you i was not clear about that part yeah. and so all the uh postal service people not the band not ben gibbard <laughs> and the other guy but the uh, mailmen they were all like oni was a hero and what do you do with heroes you attack taxidermy their bodies and send them around to be shown like abraham and lincoln at the end of so, the war exactly like abraham lincoln at the <laughs> end of the war uh and so they had only taxidermied and he uh went to the world's fair which really goes to show how fucking terrible was entertainment <laughs> in, was in 1904 they're like that was the fair and they're like pretty good i saw that dead dog <laughs> that, used to, that used to go around with a male yeah you remember yeah. that dog? there was a cedar bucket <laughs> He was not pretty big. I think I was taller than it, but it was big for yeah. a bucket. It wasn't the best taxidermy <laughs> I've ever seen, but it was it something sounds to like look the people at, who wrote you know? the Wikipedia page for the war and reenactment were at the World Fair. They're like the war the, the war reenactment was phenomenal. I yeah. mean, everything else was just dead dogs and cedar <laughs> yeah. buckets. <laughs> so but only, if only the dog, yeah. Only the dog, and that what brings us to a conclusion of the nineteen oh four Olympic marathon. I uh, backslash world's fair yeah and i you know i think one thing that we can appreciate this is the first world's fair i believe after the 1893 world's fair 
in Chicago. So like if all the all, all, all the problems, yeah, of all the problems that the 1904 World Fair had, at least there wasn't a serial, serial killer, killer. <laughs> uh, operating out of a, a a death mansion across the street from the fairgrounds. I think that's one thing we can all agree on. Glass I think the full. biggest lesson we've learned, Jimmy and I, on this show is that Family Matters was that TV show it was with Steve Urkel. Urkel. <laughs> yeah, who knew? I'll who say knew? next episode, I'll and, think of what I'm talking about. And that Urkel had a machine that step turned him into step. a very racist character. Step by step. Step um, by we'll step. Find out listen, we'll find out next time. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get <kiss> <laughs> <laughs>